Hey guys, before we get into SOS today, quick reminder that my vinyl giveaway sponsored by Symbol is still ongoing. Grab the app Symbol, top link in the description down below. Music community based app. I'm posting all of my favorite songs on there, everything from the 1975 to Red Hot Chili Peppers and everything in between. Once I get to 5,000 followers on the app, giving away vinyl copies, free vinyl to you guys, to anyone who's following me on the app. That's all you got to do to be eligible. I'm giving away the 1975's most recent album and Green Day's American Idiot. So go give me a follow at ARTV on Simple and on with the video. What's up everyone, John from Beyond ARTV. It's time for another underrated edition of Seven on Sunday. You guys really seem to enjoy it whenever I do underrated songs from Insert Band here. And today the band that I'm gonna be inserting is All Time Low. You guys have been talking about them a lot. Obviously there's a new single out in the world. Uh, there's a lot of buzz around All Time Low right now. A lot of people are talking. So today I figured I would just go ahead and talk about seven songs that I feel are totally underrated. Just go off of most people's radar, even some of the hard core fans, not everyone knows about them, and a lot of times it's not your fault because their debut EP and their debut album are just not available on streaming services. You have to go to places like, uh, you know, a Google search, maybe to download them somewhere else, a YouTube search to find them and listen to them in full. So it's not any blame on your fault. I'm going to try to pick stuff from all throughout their discography because there's underrated stuff from really all of their records. Obviously, I can't do this all in just seven songs. They have so many underrated projects. I could honestly say their debut EP and their debut album, and a lot of stuff off of like Dirty Work. There's just a lot of underrated stuff from All Time Low at this point, but the pop punkers from Baltimore have so many good songs. So I'm going to talk about seven of them today. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Leave a like on the video, and let's go ahead and see what I have on my list. The very first all-time low track we're going to talk about today is Painting Flowers from the Almost Alice soundtrack that came out back in 2010, along with the movie. This song was written for the film, and while I didn't really like the movie all that much, I honestly found myself listening to this soundtrack pretty often. I haven't come back to it that much, but this and a few of the others, like the Avril Lavigne track Alice, are ones that I found myself coming back to over time. And not a lot of people know that this song exists. I mean, I was looking it up on YouTube, and it just didn't seem to have anywhere near near the attention even though they were a pretty prominent band in the scene at that time, so I definitely have to recommend it to you guys. I've always felt like Alex Gaskarth is a very talented lyricist. I like that he uses his imagination and he's able to open like portals to the mind's eye with a lot of the imagery that he uses in his lyrics, and a lot of them, especially in the earlier days, were very clever, and we see that once again here. It made sense that they got him on the Almost Alice soundtrack. I love what they're talking about here. They're really just opening us up to this world of what Alice is seeing, but at the same time, it could really be taken to just disappearing, going somewhere else to escape, to get away from the world. So I like that this track isn't just for a movie. It definitely transcends that, in my opinion. And it has great guitars on it. I love the chorus. Every time it rolls around, it's so easy to sing along, especially as the just lingering last words of the chorus really just hang on. It almost seems a little bit bitter, like you're holding on to hope. I am still painting flowers for you. He's like holding that up like, please, you know, I'm still here. Let's try, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm gonna keep doing this and chugging away anyways. Following up what I was saying with Painting Flowers, we have a track from Future Hearts called Cinder Block Garden. Now I say following up because I do feel like this one kind of also builds upon the imagination. He's comparing here, Alex that is, just laying the foundation of love, and he's obviously, I feel like, talking about his now wife, longtime girlfriend Lisa. They were high school sweethearts, and we're going to talk more about that in some of our other underrated songs that we get to. But here, on this track, it really seems like he's talking about how things are going 
going to be okay. While it wasn't always just white roses and maybe a nice picket fence and a nice house, they got through the rough patches and they made it to where they are now. And he's talking about like kind of in his mind building up this castle, this fortress around them and their love. And it's a very, very pretty track. I love the opening. Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, that really just guides you into this track. The guitars on it are really nice. They really stand out. They kind of like rise above the production. High school romances don't usually last, and Noelle is a perfect example of that. Now, fans continue to argue on whether or not this is actually about Lisa, Alex Gaskarth's now wife, but I do feel like it probably is, but it could have been about another high school romance. Who knows exactly what influenced Alex for this song? This is not one that they play live anymore or anything like that. It doesn't get the attention that it deserves. It actually appeared on their debut album, The Party Scene, back in 2005. Now, 2005 was a very important year for me because that was whenever I was just getting into music and unfortunately I didn't discover All Time Low until two years later but I did go back ended up downloading their record and really really love the party scene. This has always been a standout cut to me. I really enjoy the guitars on this one and how bitter some of the lyrical content seems and not just bitter it also seems a little bit like throwing caution to the wind it's like maybe he regrets some of the decisions but at the same time he knows that they're kind of reckless lovers and he knows that they're causing a lot of mayhem along the way. The guitars kind of sear on this and add to the feel that this love is very out of control. They don't exactly know where it's headed. Maybe it is on and off again, but at the same time, the desire, the passion, the spark that Alex sings about so often, I feel like this is around the time whenever it started. If you float all the way back to the party scene, Alex was just like 15 or 16 years old writing songs for this, which is absolutely mind-blowing. And honestly, this stuff isn't earth-shattering or groundbreaking new stuff, but at the same time, for being that young, this music and the lyrical content is so well composed. You guys can't sleep on the party scene or their debut EP, which we're going to get to in just a minute. Rush of the past, I quietly crash and the tables turn. I will continue to prophesy the wonders of to live and let go until I die, until all of you guys have heard this wonderful song. It was in my top 10 all-time low tracks, which you can check out in the description, or there will be an annotation on screen at the end of the video if you guys somehow missed that whenever I uploaded it last year. This is one of those tracks that I feel is one of their best lyrically. It has a nice subdued feel to it. There's a lot of nuance and some of the stuttered guitars, a little bit of a calming effect with the bass tones on it as well, before really pumping pumping you up before the pre-chorus and the chorus, and I like how they kind of echo out some of the vocals, especially before the chorus rolls around the second time. It's just a really, really well done song, well composed, well written, and it's one of the ones that was never really promoted all that much. I don't think they really played it live, out on tours, and then whenever Don't Panic It's Longer and of course Future Hearts came out, this one just kind of got swept under the rug, which is a damn shame because I feel like it really stands out. Kid, you're a cut above. Always is just a cut above the rest and that's what I'm saying it's like a cut above some of these other songs that get more attention but hey that's just me Acoustic guitars in all-time low aren't something that we always get, but whenever it does show up, it's very emphatic, it always means a lot, it's usually a very personal track, one that has a lot of feeling to it, and I love whenever it shows up on Running From Lions. This first appeared on the party scene, and then later re-recorded for their very popular EP, Put Up or Shut Up. I first got into it from the Put Up or Shut Up EP, which I actually downloaded before the party scene. I got into that one a little bit after, after I realized that they had another album out there in the world. Running From Lions is just always one that stood out to me. I like how it starts off with the acoustic guitar and then they're like, eh, just kidding. And then it kind of fades out and just fizzles in with that fast paced drum rhythm and then the guitars. It's just really, really catchy. It's a guitar line that gets stuck in your head 
over and over again. The chorus on this thing is huge. I love kind of the breakdown. The bridge of this track is very, very powerful. Running from lions, it never seemed like a good idea. You're never going to get away from those problems if you just continue to run whatever it might be that's facing you in life. That's not how to deal with it. Back in 2012, All Time Low described Guts as the best song that they've ever written together as a band. And while Dirty Work might be my least favorite album from them, I don't hate it as much as some other people seem to. Now, there are some bad songs on there, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Maybe on an overrated All Time Low songs video someday. The Guts to Say Anything. This is one of those tracks that seems to be a little bit about self-empowerment, but at the same time, it's like trying to get out of a relationship, standing up for yourself, having a little bit of self-worth, self-confidence, and I feel like it is kind of a voice for those who maybe feel trapped in a situation or a relationship. Honestly, having the guts to say anything. It's one of those things where it's like, hey, I'm feeling these things. I'm feeling a certain way. There's a lot of possibilities, a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes. Maybe there's a lot of lies and deceit building up. Let's stop being facetious and let's take care of this now. I have the guts to say something. It's got a nice guitar line on it. It's a very hooky track. It just has a nice melody about it. The chorus will get stuck inside of your head. It is one of their poppier tracks, but hey, that's dirty work for you. It's a popular album in general, still a lot of fun overall, and I do feel like they did the best that they could while they were on Interscope Records. I'm looking forward to another day without you. The way I see it, you could never do what I do. I woke up you with open arms, and draw the knife right through my my number one pick for the most underrated all-time low song. Criminally underrated. No one knows about it. It's only got like 4,000 plays on YouTube whenever I looked it up. Maybe there's other versions floating around that I don't know about, but I still feel like I have to talk about this song and I have to give it the number one spot. It's called The Next Best Thing off of their debut EP. The three words dot dot dot. You can figure out the rest. Google it. Seriously, look it up now. The three words to remember in dealing with death came out in 2004. The guys were so young. All Time Low technically kind of formed in like 2003. They just came out of Alex's first band that Ryan and I believe Jack had also joined. And finally, they got the all-time low lineup 2003-2004. The next best thing just crashes in with these thrashing drums that I can't help but headbang to every single time. And that guitar is just so fast and it really just calls you to arms, basically. And towards the end of the track, it comes back as well. A nice little guitar break. And I think that this track just really seems to be about somebody who seems to be really full of themselves and a relationship and it's like hey you're not exactly hot shit yourself I'm gonna go on to something better you were the next best thing I had another option waiting there was another girl right around the corner so maybe it's a track about revenge maybe you're just trying to get someone jealous but the next best thing works and if you guys have never heard their debut EP like I said please go check it out I do apologize if this episode of seven on Sunday felt a little bit rushed maybe some of my wording wasn't the best I only had a small amount of time to get this film so please leave a like on the video today and let me know some of your choices for criminally underrated all-time low songs don't forget to subscribe to the channel because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed you can check out my top 10 all-time low songs by clicking right here highly recommend that one or the last episode of seven on Sunday if you missed it click those little annotations right there social media linked in the description down below. Don't forget to give me a follow on Symbol. Once I get to 5,000 followers there, we're doing a vinyl giveaway sponsored by them. Other than that, I'll see you guys very soon right here on Beyond ARTV.